Today in the news, we got a whole lot of AMD. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. The Gaming GPU War. A war between red and green that has lasted for almost three decades. Whether it was ATI, 3DFX, AMD, or Nvidia, it's always been between the two colors. Sorry, Matrox and Intel, blue wasn't that important back then. Anyways, in the last five to eight years, we've seen Nvidia absolutely explode in terms of its range of products. No longer is it data center compute and gaming GPUs only, but now you got consoles, cars, deep learning, and AI that all need their chips or specific parts of chips. In fact, in the future, the company is even expanding to CPUs, DPUs, which is a new term for me, and diving deeper into ARM thanks to their still in the works acquisition of the company. That's what you call diversification. On the other hand though, you have AMD. In the last three to four years, the company did bounce back from a pretty dark place. And now, well, it feels like they're too focused on consoles, CPUs, and GPUs. In fact, for a pretty long time, AMD's stance on ARM products has been that it wouldn't really touch it at all. AMD and Intel kind of took it easy and relaxed since they're the major companies who are allowed to build x86 products. In the meantime, ARM basically took off. The Apple M1 SoC is essentially the poster child for ARM these days. Well, it seems like maybe AMD is finally seeing the value in moving to a non-Intel controlled x86 environment. During the Q2 earnings call for AMD, two things kept coming back. First, the shortage. What are you gonna do about the shortage of GPUs? Well, AMD basically just kept avoiding the question and answer by simply saying that the supply chain has been tight overall for the semiconductor industry and that they've been working very closely with their supply chain partners. Basically, boilerplate corporate response. But the second thing that these analysts kept pestering AMD about was ARM and AMD's future with a risk design. Well, it took four people asking essentially the same question for us to finally have an answer. It was Mark Lipisys who asked if AMD was planning on using an ARM IP that AMD had in the past. Lisa responded that no, they don't have any plans with this specific IP, but added that they use ARM IPs in various aspects of their devices. In terms of that specific custom ARM design, we don't have that in plans right now. In terms of whether we would use custom ARM designs, I think the answer is yes. That's the whole idea of semi-custom business. Finally, it took this much text, take a look at it, to get to that. That is good news, guys, because with Apple showing what ARM is capable of, and Nvidia literally focusing half of their work on ARM-based processing, we could see a dramatic shift in the ARM versus x86 landscape in the next five years. Not only that, but Lisa mentioned that they are working towards more specified chips. She said to John Peitzer about his questions on ARM and ASICs, if you look at the evolution of our architecture, I think that when we do these chiplet architectures and things like that, it really allows that. She is talking about the flexibility to have more specified chips on a chiplet design. Essentially, we can see an AMD CPU with a chiplet for x86 instructions and a chiplet for ARM, AKA RISC instructions. That could be really cool. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Also in AMD news, and I missed this a couple of days ago, but according to fellow YouTuber, Red Gaming Tech, the refresh of Zen 3 called Warhol got canceled. Now, why? Well, because of the current market conditions and apparently to focus more on the next generation, AKA Zen 4. Warhol is to Vermeer what Matisse refresh was to Matisse. It doesn't go down a major node, just an optimized version of it called N6. It doesn't really change the architecture. All we're looking at are tiny optimizations in the design and maybe a refined process. We might as well call it a Ryzen 5000 XT. And for that reason, I honestly don't think that AMD is actually canceling it. They're already 90% there and these would sell anyways. So why would they not come out with Warhol? What's for sure is that we will see five nanometers and four before the end of 2022. And given AMD's one year and a few months of development, I would predict that Zen 3 Plus would arrive in November this year slash December and a proper five nanometer Zen 4 in mid 2022. I mean, remember, we have Alder Lake also from Intel coming up and uh, 
it might be good, who knows. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. It was all red. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. All red, oh my God, I'm so dumb. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next, on the next one. I don't know why I did this. Take care. Till the day is over, I just wanna know.